word tested and they heard the word tempted. Have you ever heard the word tempted before? What is temptation? Him, yeah, yeah. Let him answer. He is honest, innocent, and pure. Your son is very different from the children of this world. And don't, don't stop him. Because he is honest. Is it right, Mama? He cannot tell lies. Because that's how God has created him. And I love him. Is that okay? Mama? Yeah, tell me, son. What is temptation? Good. See? Good. You are talking about Eve. She got tempted. Adam got tempted. And Satan used words to change their thinking. So what is temptation? Temptation is when I get thoughts that puts pressure on my thinking that forces me to move in a direction away from God is temptation. Do we all get thoughts? Yes. yes. Now looking at me, some people will get thoughts outside the Bible. Is he a Malayali? Is he a Bowen? Is he a Mandalorian? Is he an East Indian? Different kind of thoughts. Praise God. So thoughts are bound to come. Now when these thoughts come, the question is, are these thoughts drawing me closer to God? Or are these thoughts taking me away from God? And every time we have ever committed sin, have you committed sin? Yes. yes. Before you commit sin, what comes? Temptation. Means what? Thoughts to rebel against God. So temptation always comes from Satan and they come so that you do not stand on your feet, you fall down into sin and remain in disobedience. That's temptation. But this does not come from the devil. It comes from God. Now, in UK, son, do you have exams? In school, do you have exams? What do they, what do they say over here? Do you have exams? Yes. First primary, no. Secondary, yes. Okay, secondary, yes. Thank God. There's somebody shocking me. Thank God. One person is there who touched me. Okay. Why do you think there are exams? When we were small, there used to be an essay. Write on an essay. What if there were no exams? Yay! 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 Now, tell me, you did yay, yay, yay. If there were no exams, would you study? No. 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 So if you would not study, would you ever gain knowledge? No. And if you did not get knowledge, would you be in a better position? No. So what did the exams do? They forced you to study. And why did, you, they, why did they have exams? They, exam, they had exams to check on you. How much have you gained the knowledge that was imparted to you? And if you're not qualified to take the pressure on this level, if they give you a promotion on the next level, you will totally get burnt out. Is it right? So that's why there was a test. Praise God. Anybody married and having children? Thank God. You have got children. I can talk to you. Now, how many children do you have? Two. Do you remember when the baby was born and the baby did not talk? Did you sit and cry? No. no. The baby had no teeth. Did you sit and cry? No. Your baby was born without teeth. Yes. Did you tell your mama, oh my God, she has got no teeth. We'll have to take the dog to the dentist. No. Huh? No. Was, she did not have high also, please God. Was she running? No. So what kind of baby you want? The baby was not turning, the baby was not standing, the baby was not running. So you got a baby 
who was not doing any of those things, but who are you sad? No. Why not? No because you knew at some point, something. as I feed my baby and nourish my baby with food, in due season, my baby body will begin to mature. My baby will begin to learn and in due season, the baby will start crying. Now, do you remember the first time when the baby stood up in a drunken stride? You remember? And the baby fell down. When you saw the baby stand for the first time, even though it was a drunken child, were you happy? Oh yeah. And look at you, the cruel mom. She put the baby back on the feet and said, Alele, come, come, and even showed her a chocolate. And the baby in that drunken style fell down again. Did it hurt the baby? Yes. But did you shock? Why not? Because you know, you know the potential that is in the baby, but the baby doesn't know. And that's why you made the baby do it again and again and again, till one day the baby started walking. And then you said, I'm not satisfied, now you have to run. Now you're not satisfied, now you have to jump. And you as a mother, knowing the potential, began to do all that. And then came a time in the school, there was a course for gym, uh, gymnastics. Did you, will you put your baby for gymnastics? Yes. Now the question is, have you ever done it before? But look at the cruel mama, putting the baby to roll, somersault, and all that, but she has not done it. Why do you think you are doing those things? Because I know her potential. You know her potential. And potential will come out when? With under pressure? With practice. With practice and under pressure? Or without practice? No, without pressure. pressure. And that is why God who is your creator knows your potential which you and I do not know. And that's why he allows certain trials and certain things to happen in our life only because he knows the kind of potential he has put in you so that using the tools of heaven, you will not only face those trials, you will be able to overcome them and become more stronger than before. So temptation comes from the devil to destroy you. Trials and testing comes from the Lord to build you up, strengthen you, and make you go to the next level. Hello? Are you following what we have learned? Yeah. So when a person is in a trial, it is absolutely negative, it is uncomfortable. At that time, is the person seeing it as an opportunity to rise higher? Or looks at that trial and gets into fear. Because we have been taught anything that comes against you under pressure is evil. And that's why our mindset is already being done. That when it, anything that comes to make me uncomfortable and puts pressure on me, it comes from the devil and it is evil. When a person has this kind of a thought, the person has already got a mind of a victim. A victim mind cannot have victory in life. Recently we had the World Cup, right? Yes. And there were those players playing over there. Do you think they just got to that level of playing without practicing? No. What about their coach? Do you think the coach must have put so much of pressure to take the kick again and again and again? thousands of times, the same thing repeated again and again till it became perfect. Is that right? Yes. And because they have been practicing and practicing and practicing and playing every day, when the tough team comes, they are filled with their strategies, their potentials, and now the very team which looked to be weak has now reached the finals. Hello? Are you understanding? Yes. So might be all your life you were a victim, 
you lived a defeated life and God is saying, I do not want you to be in that level. I want to take you to the high level. But before I can take you to that high level, I have to grow your spiritual muscles of believing. And that's why there is a test. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when there is a test, always remember, when there is a test, it is not you who is going to be tested, but it is your faith that is going to be tested. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. The Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give you an example. Go to James chapter 1, verse number 2. James chapter 1, verse number 2. Can somebody read it, please? Children? Hello, children. You don't have a Bible? You have a mobile? Wow! I wish I could take your photograph. You don't have a Bible? You don't have a mobile? Can you have believed? The children in UK going around without mobile? <laughs> you don't have a mobile? What about you? Where's your mobile? Where's yours? Yeah. Yeah. Where's yours? With that. With that? Okay. Now, on your mobile, do you have WhatsApp? On the same mobile, do you have WhatsApp of heaven called the Bible? Download it. Hey, you have Bible downloaded? Uh, yeah, I'll check again. <laughs> but WhatsApp, do you, if somebody has to ask, do you have WhatsApp on your mobile? Yes, what is it? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If WhatsApp is for chatting on this earth, Bible is for chatting for those who want to get connected to heaven and chat with God. Praise God. Praise God. And imagine, we have WhatsApp, but we don't have the Bible. Okay, read it please. James, a servant of God. No, verse number two. Go, go directly to verse number two. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. My brothers. My brothers. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kind. Now, when you get trials, when well, let's say a person lost his job, can he, can he have joy? When the doctor gives a bad report, can he have joy? When nasty things happen to you, can he have joy? But Paul, what does the Bible say? Count it nothing but joy. When you have trials, what? Of any kind. Now what is the meaning of the word joy? Now we, we heard over here that God asked Abraham, I want you to go and take your son and offer your son as a sacrifice. Right? Did he get this son in his old age? Yes. What was his age? What was the age of the wife, Sarah? 90. And this son has grown maybe 20 years old. That age is not given. Let's say 20. And now God tells him, Abraham, I want you to take your only son. Go to the land of Moriah, which is three days journey. And I want you to go and sacrifice your son there. Is it joyful? Hello, is it joyful? No. So what is joy? What is joy? Happiness. Okay, what is happiness then? Fulfilled in your life. Today is your birthday. Are you happy? Yes. And I did not wish you. I came and spoke to you, but I did not wish you. And I'm a very close friend of yours. Will you be happy now? No. We husbands always remember the birthdays 
and anniversaries, and the wife always forgets. She's saying, the brother is saying, the reverse thing. Yes, yes, yes. Now, now, your husband forgot to wish you on your birthday, and you were all decked up, and you smelled good, you decorated yourself good, you prepared nice dishes on that day, and the husband is with his newspaper. The morning went, night time he came, now he's with the football match. And you are sitting right in front, and he's busy with the football match. What comes to your mind? And at quarter to twelve, when the match got over, your match began. <laughs> and you said to him, don't you remember today is my birthday? And now, what is his reaction? Oh! And what is the one saying? Don't touch me. <laughs> and that cold war can go on and on and on. So what happens to your happiness? So your happiness is that emotional feeling which is depending on how others perform for you. If it is all in your favor, you are happy. But when things go wrong and things go negative, are you happy? So is your life governed by joy or happiness? Don't know, because I don't know the meaning of the word joy. Okay, let's put it this way now. Did Jesus embrace the cross with joy? This question is too difficult to answer. Yes, my dear friend with checks, chessboard. Yeah. Did Jesus em embrace the cross with joy? He was crucified. He was bleeding. He was breathing his last. He even said to his father, if it's not your will, then take this cup of suffering away from me, but not my will, but your will. He sweated blood because of the pressure on his mind. And you are saying he embraced the cross with joy? Yeah, give me the answer. What happened? Did Jesus endure the cross with joy? So give me the reason. So in other words, he was going to suffer, but his mind was not fixed on his suffering, but his mind was fixed on the outcome of his suffering would be that you and I would receive salvation. So joy is when a person knows the end result. Now, you were watching a football match. It was live. Any moment the match can turn around. It's penalty shootout. Are you going to be under pressure? Yes. yes. And let's say your team won the match. The next day the highlights are shown. You're watching the same match. And somebody else is watching who doesn't know the match. Who will be under pressure? And what about you? You know the result, that's why. That's why no pressure. But you only see the game yesterday. Yeah, you watched the game yesterday. That's why no pressure. In the same way, what Jesus was going through, he knew the end result, that all he had to do was continue to do his father's will. And if he's able to establish that, then he also knows that you and I would be saved. So his focus was not on the test, but his focus was 
of the result of the test. You said you have two children. When you got married, for the first time, you got pregnant. Were you happy? Oh yeah. You even went and whispered in your husband's ears. Good. Now, because you are pregnant, you have to search the Google search how to make eyes, grow eyes, heart, lungs, and all that for the child. Was that your job? No. No. The pregnancy had started, that was your job. After that, you had no control. The cells began to multiply and the baby was being formed. As the pregnancy continued, you had morning sickness and you began to vomit. Anything that you ate came as vomit. You could not eat and it was just the first month. Did you tell your husband, this is too much, let me go and abort the baby? After three months, you were so slim and beautiful. Now slowly, your body began to become like a cylinder like me. <laughs> and you looked into the mirror and you said, Oh my God! Your shape turned into a cylinder. Did you get depressed? No. No. By the fourth month, there were some complications and the doctor said, Listen, there is a danger to your baby and you would have to take about 25 injections. Would you agree? Yeah. 25 injections in your body? Why? Because I got pregnant after a long time. You got pregnant after a long time, that's why. If you had to get pregnant early, you would have aborted the baby. No, I was excited. <laughs> you were excited and you said, no matter what happens, doctor, why 25? You can take 50. <laughs> because your focus was, I want my baby. Then came the seventh one, now the back is paining, legs are paining, and the ninth one. And the doctor told you, when you will get a little pain, don't stay at home, come as quick as you can. And that morning, the pain started. What did the pain say? The pain said, it is time for you to give birth to a miracle. Is that right? In the same way, my friends, when we go through the trials, and like a pregnancy, you are holding on to the promises of God, and you are holding on to the promises of God, and you are holding on to the promises of God, and there is now no pain come in. When the pain is increasing, in spite of you standing on the word of God, it is an indicator your time has come to deliver your miracle. Praise God. Now, the pain started and you had to go to the hospital. You could not go walking. So you decided, let me go on a horse. Will you ever take a lift, a free lift, to get onto the horse? To go to the hospital. No. Why not? I might fall off. Oh, you might fall off. That's why. A good seat is there with the belt around, you will not fall. Now, would you like to sit on a horse? Because with your jerks, the baby might die before reaching the hospital. You will not even try to get into a rickshaw. You will try to get into a vehicle which has got good shock observer. Is it right? Yeah. Come on. And now you reach the hospital and the pain began. How long was the pain? Three days. Wow. Three days screaming and the husband outside <laughs> because the pressure is so much. When he leaves the smoke, the baby comes out. Yeah? Come on. Three days of pain. How many times do you think at that time, I don't want any more baby. This is too much painful. After three days, you were all tired and the baby was delivered. And the nurse came and gave you the baby. And what were you? Uh, did you do that? 
No, even in that pain, even in that tiredness, you grabbed the baby and you looked at the baby and you said, wow, the eyes and the nose looks like grandpa. <laughs> and the lips looks like my husband. Did you say that? So, were you having the pain? Yes. Were you going through the process? Yes. But did you abort the process? No. no. It was painful. But your eyes were fixed on that baby whom you could not see, but it was in your womb. Now, I understand that it was your first experience. Why did you go back to the second experience when you had first experienced so much of pain? Because when you found the first baby, the baby was so much joyful that you said, it doesn't matter for me to go through those nine years of pregnancy, uh, nine, nine years or nine months. <laughs> Ladies, nine years or nine months? Nine months. What if it was nine years? Some of you would have fainted. Please God. So, were you ready to go through that nine months pregnancy once again? Yes. Why? Because you know the end result is a reward of a beautiful baby. And those whose eyes are fixed on that are the ones who will continue the pregnancy. And those who get irritated and say, I don't want to go through all the pain and uncomfort, will go and abort the baby. So what is joy? Joy is to know that in this journey that I'm going through, it's temporary, it's not permanent. And the end of this journey is, I am going to be victorious, and I am going to have a reward. Are you working? Yes. How many hours are you working? Five hours a day. Are you studying as well? Now, is it easy to go through that journey of one hour to work? No. But yet you're going. Why? Because you enjoy those five hours? Or after the five hours, are you enjoying the pounds that you receive? Do you know why all these wonderful people left go and came? Because they love UK. Because of the cold climate. Because in Goa, you don't get this climate. Husband. It was never for the pounds, but it was for the weather. No. Hello. Come on, what was it? In the same way, God is saying, when you and I go to a trial and we pass the test, there is always a great reward. And before that reward can be manifested, there's going to be a great change a great transformation in our life. And that's why this test is a necessity. If a person goes to the gym and uses his right hand only and picks up the dumbbells and works on his right hand only, day and night, will that pressure come on his muscles? Yes. When the pressure comes and is doing it in the right way, Will it help him to grow more strong muscles? Yes. Yes. But if he doesn't hold it right and he's doing it just the way, anyhow, will it tear his muscles? Yes. So the pressure when it comes on us and we do not face it with the word of God, that, that pressure will tear you and destroy you. But the same pressure, when you use it with the word of God, the same pressure will make you strong and bold and courageous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what is joy? Joy is knowing the end result or joy is when the person's mind is fixed on Jesus. That you know and you know that I am going to be victorious. Example, Paul is saying, hey, death, hey, death, where are you? Where's your sting, man? Come, come.
come and get me. Come and kill me, you spirit of death. I am longing for you to come and kill me. Why? Because if you kill me quickly, the next moment I will be with my Lord, whom I have never seen in flesh and blood. But I am going to face him and I am going to see him. And death, if you fail to kill me, I have got news to tell you. Till my last breath, I am going to preach the word. And when I preach the word, people who hear the word will receive salvation and their souls will be saved. So, if I get killed, I win. If I don't get killed, I preach and still I win. And that was the attitude of Paul and that's why he was always joyful. Are we joyful understanding the word of God or are we only trying to be happy? Happy is like the ECG uh, graph. Have you ever seen the ECG graph? Yes. Morning I'm happy. In the afternoon, yeah. can it be possible the wife going and telling the husband, darling, I love you in the morning. Good morning, mm, God bless you, love you. After one hour, <laughs> I hate you. Possible? Yeah. <laughs> this is the first time the husband opened his mouth so loudly. Can the wife get irritated, brother? Yeah. But in the afternoon, you did something good for her. Okay. Can she say, darling, you are the best, best husband any wife can ever dream of. Yes. And then again, you failed in your performance. Can it give a different tone? Yes. <laughs> so happiness is depending how like the ECG. And what happens to the person whose ECG goes this way? That person is dead. And God is looking for such people in his team whose emotions are dead. Whose commitments are 100% based on the word of God. And such are the people who are not interested in happiness, they are interested in joy. So a person can have joy in the worst of the worst moments of his life because his eyes are fixed on Jesus. When you go home, try to watch a movie called War Room. War Room. In this, the lady, her husband is having a bad relationship, uh, a relationship with another woman. Okay. Now when he has got a relationship with another woman, will she be happy or sad? There are all these quarrels and fights and all that. And she begins to understand the word of God and she realizes that she has been condemning him, judging him, she is bitter, she is angry, and she has all those emotions against him. And she begins to realize and she says, God, please forgive me. I'm not his judge, you are his judge. Please forgive me that I'm not able to love him the way you love me when I make mistakes. I'm not able to forgive him the way you forgive me when I make mistakes. I'm not able to look at him with compassion and mercy the way you look at me when I am on the wrong side. So Lord, please help me to love him. And Lord, please, I need your help. This husband of mine is doing something wrong. I am not his judge, but you are. I cannot control him, but you are. Please, please stop him from doing those things. Please, Lord, stop him from doing those things. Take over the battle. I don't want to fight with him. I want you to make him understand. And then she says to the devil, Listen, devil. All this time, you have been playing on my mind. And because you have been playing on my mind, I have always been reacting. I have always fought with my husband. But now, you are playing with my mind no more. Because my joy does not come from my friends. My joy does not come from my job of one the pounds or money. My joy does not come from my husband. My joy does not come from anybody. My joy is found in Jesus Christ. And when she makes that, a firm 
position that my joy in my life is because I'm connected to Jesus, what happens? The Spirit of God takes over and brings a change in our husband. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can you ask a question to yourself? Your joy comes from me. Is it a job? Is it your spouse? Is it your children? Is it your finances? Is it the sin? Is it the pleasure of some games? What is it that gives you joy? Because all of them is not joy. Joy only comes when you are connected to Jesus. Amen. And that's what happened to Abraham. When he tasted, when he tasted, he is filled with joy. How can a man have joy when he's been asked to sacrifice his only son? Can a person have joy? Then how come Abraham had so much of joy? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. You and I can face the toughest of the toughest situation when we have joy. And joy comes when a person is looking to Jesus and not to his situation. Not to his problem. Not to his pain. But looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of his faith. Amen? Amen. Now, when, he, when, when Abraham was tested to take his son and go, did Abraham go and tell Sarah, I heard the Lord say, I'm supposed to sacrifice my son, our son. Let's say your husband came and told you, God told me to sacrifice our son. The next line would be, and Sarah took Abraham and sacrificed instead of Isaac, and she had Abraham for touching our son. Did Abraham go and talk to Sarah? No. What if he had talked? What if he had been talking to Sarah about the sacrifice? What do you think Sarah would have done to him? She would have killed him there only. Hallelujah. So did Abraham talk to anybody? No. Why? Because when you speak to people with unbelief, their unbelief will kill your faith. When you fellowship with people who have no life with Christ, their life of worldly desire will be so contagious that it will infect you and you will find yourself into the same kind of life. Hallelujah. 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 In the verse number 2, James 1 verse 3. James 1 verse 3. For you know. For you know. Say that. For you know. For you know. Say that. No. No. Say that again. No. Say that again. No. Say that again. No. How many of you know the way back home? Lift your hands up. From here, from this church. How many of you know the way back home without asking anybody you can reach home? I'm not talking about the GPS. I'm talking about you walking, driving, whatever. You know your way home. No. Very few. Because you are from this parish. And those who have come from outside they keep using the GPS. And listen, when that lady says right turn, your husband will obey her. But when you have to say to your husband right turn, he will say, don't you ever teach me, I know what I'm doing. Is it right? Yes. Wives? Is it right, girl? The wife whom you can see, you don't listen. But that woman who is in the GPS, 
Când și să este căiută, nu voi de căiută. Why? Because we know that the GPS is right and will show me the way to reach my destination. Is that right? But let's say you are in Goa, in your parish. Do you need a GPS to go home? No. Do you know your way back home? Yes. But let's say I'm sitting in the car and I'm saying, not a right turn but a left turn. What will you say? No. You will say, I know. No. What will you say? I know. But I'll say, no, 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 it's, a, it's the opposite side. What will you say? Will you follow my instructions or will you still follow your own? Are you confident? Yes. So when you know you are confident in the knowledge that you know. Are you following? Yes. Read that. For we know. For we know that the testing of your faith. For we know that the testing of your faith. Now, did the Bible say you will be tested or your faith will be tested? Hello, what will be tested? Why not you? Now, how does a person get faith? By hearing the word of God. Okay, let, let's take for example how, how the faith will be tested. Now, we were in school when we learned mathematics that if you had 10 pounds, and you give the poor man seven pounds, so how many will you have? Think about it again. You have ten pounds and you gave away seven pounds. How many will you have? I'm giving you one more chance. Think about it. Now, did she change? No. She's sure. She's at three, 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 three. I'm trying to put pressure on her. What is she saying? Three. Answer is right. Now, if Jesus comes and says this, baby, you have ten pounds and you gave away seven pounds to that poor man, how many will you have? Okay, just open to Luke chapter 6, 38 and we'll see. Luke 6, 38. Are you getting bored? No. Because many of you might even think, when will the healing session begin? The healing session does not begin, neither does it end. When you know the truth, the truth brings healing in every area. So what are you learning now? The, the truth. Yeah, read that. Hey baby, what is it with you? A give or take? Give. Okay, you gave seven, then? And it shall be given unto you. Wow! When you give, it shall be given unto, it shall be given unto you. Yes. So it's going to come back to you. Yeah, how? Oh. With good measure, uh -huh. press it down, uh -huh. shaken together, uh -huh. and running over, uh -huh. shall men give into your, into your bosom. So men will give or women will give? It's not written, the Lord will give. Sorry. Don't add your words. The Bible clearly says, men will give at the abusive. Now that men includes women because the woman came from a man. Okay? Now, now, now. Now, after you read this scripture, after you read this scripture, now Jesus comes and tells you, baby you have ten pounds and you gave seven to the poor. How many will you have? 700. Sorry? 700. Who is saying? <laughs> Why is he saying 700? Because you just now read, it will be given to you the same measure. Now, how? Good measure. Press down. Shaken together. 
running over shall men give unto your bosom. Now the question is, do I believe three or do I believe the seven hundred? We believe the three. But what is the word demanding us to believe? So what is faith? Faith is not when a person believes three. That is human faith. It produces zero result. The faith is when the person believes the word and tells himself, all my life I learned when I gave, there is subtraction. But in God's kingdom, when I gave anything, anything to somebody who is in me and not expecting anything from that person, I have multiplication. Now the question is, when a person is believing this kind of thinking, this kind of thinking is unseen. Can he see the 700? No. No. But is he believing? Yes. And because he is believing, now what is he doing? That believing is called as faith. So can a person say, I have faith in God without the promise of God? No. no. When a person is saying, I have faith, the next point comes, which scripture are you thinking on? Which scripture has given you assurance, guarantee, surety, confidence to believe? Are you following? Yes. And that's why he says, we know that the testing of our faith. If I had no word of God, would I have joy? Yeah. No. Now that I have joy, that joy, the enemy will try to steal my joy. To get, in, to get my thoughts on the word or on the situation. On the situation. So when the test is going on, the test is, will I believe my situation or will I believe what God said? Will I believe what the doctor said or will I believe what the God said? Will I believe what the symptoms say? Will I believe what God said? And that is a test that we all go through in our lives. And those who believe, those who believe, not the three, but the 700, these are the ones who always see in their life supernatural manifestation of God's power in their life. And that's why James says, we know that, that the testing of our faith produces patience. Has anybody ever lost their patience? The women are always patient. Men? Sorry. Brother? Please. You have every right to keep your mouth shut. Because whatever you spoke will be taken into account when you reach home. <laughs> and then don't call, out, call me and say, Brother, I attended the meeting and ensure things getting better. Everything went crazy at home. So please be careful when you open your mouth. And this is going live. So be careful. She might be smiling now. Has have you ever lost your patience? Sometimes. Sometimes. Why do you lose your patience? Okay, whenever you lost your patience, at that time, was your thinking focused on God's promise? Or the situation. So what's the devil's job? The devil's job is to get your mind off God's word and get your mind on the situation. The question is, how quickly have you trained yourself and learned to say, I am not taking my focus out of God's word. For example, the camera is pointing towards me. But if I turn the camera the other side, it will point to you. 
in the same way, my eyes are my cameras. They talk to me. But also I have something called a spiritual eyes that keep focusing on the promise of God. The question is, which eyes do I choose to believe? The eyes which are natural, that see natural things, or the spiritual eyes that look at what God has promised me in His Word. If I grow and teach and train and practice and use my experience of relying on spiritual eyes that focus on the promise of God, now I have extreme patience. So what is the meaning of the word patience? Patience is, you can write down the definition of patience, patience is when a person's thinking or when the person is focused Or the person is consistent on one thing, irrespective of change of situation, irrespective of change of situation, or people's comment, the person is patient. My question to you is, can people's comment get you into impatient? Yes. Yes. Can people's gossip get you into impatience? Yes. But when all these things are happening, is the person focused on the word of God? What about Jesus when he was hung on the cross? Was he focused on his father or what people did to him? Have you ever heard people say, my life got ruined because of this person? Yes. Have you ever heard that? Yes. Is that statement true or false? Yes. Hello? Let me give you an example. You're working in the same company with me. And I go to the manager and I tell all lies about you. The manager believes and fires you and you lost your job. You're jobless. Will my action irritate you? And you did not get a job for one year. For one year, how many times will you remember me? So when somebody says, how come your life is messed up, what will you say? My life is messed up because that man did all these nasty things and I lost my job. Is it right or wrong? Yes. Come on. Yes. But the real truth is, what others do to you is not the final destination. If that was true, then there is one person to whom extreme negative things were done, and that is Jesus. When extreme negative things were done, did Jesus react or did he act? If he would react, he would get offended. But Jesus refused to react. He acted on his father's way. Did Jesus win the match? So what is Jesus teaching us? When we go through the test, and extreme negative things are done against us, ask a question, am I reacting or acting on God's word? If I am reacting, you have lost the test, you have failed the test, and the failure of test will surely bring destruction in your life. But the same test, and the person is focused on God's word, does not react but operates in love and forgiveness. Will that person's action destroy this person? No. Because he has been focused on God and his word, the Bible says, God will exalt him. 
Praise the Lord. If today you are in any kind of situation, you cannot blame anybody for that situation because the result, wherever you are, in whichever situation, is because of your corresponding action. Might be some of us reacted to the feelings and emotions. And some of us refused to react to the emotions and feelings and said, I will do 